Okay. So today our webinar is a variety of topics that the board of directors um, talk about frequently or we get asked questions about frequently. I um, want you to all keep in mind that this is um, obviously since it is being presented in spring of 2023, it is based on information in your 2023 handbooks. So let's go ahead and move forward and how you can ask questions because that may be something that happens. Maybe, there we go. Okay, so to ask questions during this webinar, please use the Q&A tool. Um, and for both of these things, both the chat and the Q&A tool, if you hover your cursor somewhere on your screen, typically somewhere around the edges, you will see a menu bar that has both the chat and the Q&A in it. Um, so for questions, as I said, use the Q&A tool. That allows us to keep track of what's being asked and be able to respond directly to you more effectively. If you'd like to just say hello and let us know where you're from, please use that chat function that many of you have already used to say hello and tell us where you're from. Okay, so diving right in. Um, this is a question that comes up a lot. And the question is, is there ever a time when the two foot rule does not apply? And the very simple answer is no, there is not. That rule always applies when you are on a therapy dog visit. It does include dogs from the same household, dogs that are friends, and dogs that are in areas with other kinds of animals. <coughs> you always want to maintain that two foot rule away from other animals, dogs, cats, mini horses, guinea pigs, rabbits, anything like that. Um, during a visit. We also want to remind you that because of the two foot rule and when our visits begin and end, dogs greeting and or playing with each other before or after a visit on facility property is not allowed. It would be breaking that two foot rule and insurance would not be in effect for you. Okay. Another question that often comes up um, many times during um, that initial testing and observing process, we hear this question is where should I potty my dog while I'm visiting? So a couple of things to keep in mind. We want to do it away from the entrance of the facility in either a designated area. Some facilities that have therapy dogs visiting frequently will have a designated area or in an area appropriate for pottying. So we want to avoid that, those pretty landscaping areas. Um, definitely want to avoid anything man-made other than things that are designated, such as this potty area that was in an airport for one of our dogs visiting, at, not visiting, but going through an airport. The fit photo was taken not on a visit. Um, we want to, again, never potty on the building or near that front entrance. They have lots and lots of people going in and out those doors, and we just want to keep that area nice and clean and, and good smelling. And always clean up after your dog. If there's not a garbage can where you feel it's appropriate to make your deposit, go ahead and take that bag off property and dispose of it after you leave on your way home or maybe even at home. But accidents do sometimes happen. And that sometimes it's our fault, sometimes it's our dog's fault, sometimes it's no fault that we can actually determine. And that's okay. Accidents are accidents, and, and that's perfectly fine. But we do need to make sure that they get cleaned up. So, what should you do if your dog has an accident while visiting? So, first of all, and this is the really hard part because it's the human part, let your dog finish. Rather than creating a trail of potty, let them go ahead and finish what they've started. Um, it will be easier cleanup and you won't have a whole trail of potty leading to a door or leading to an exit. Then we ask that you follow those facility rules and protocols regarding cleanup. Um, some facilities will want to have their janitorial staff take care of it. Other facilities will want you to take care of it. But this is definitely a question to bring up with your facility and ask them how they would like you to take care of this situation. If you'll be taking care of this, please secure your dog if necessary. You are not currently able to really conduct a very good visit at that particular point in time. So make sure that your dog is secured somewhere so that you can um, appropriately clean up 
and still attend to your dog once you're done, depending on what your facility tells you they want. Um, we want your dog to be safe um, and we want you to be following those rules for visits. So sure. this is a piece to consider um, if you have to do the cleanup for them. And then of course, if you do, go ahead, clean up, dispose of those soiled cleanup supplies in an outside appropriate garbage receptacle. Um, like we said, we know accidents happen. Um, we just wanna make sure that you have a, 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 a plan in mind, excuse me, on how to get ta that taken care of when it does happen. Okay. Um, and this has been a really big question, um, especially recently for some, for a lot of reasons, probably. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about controlling your dog's head. Um, we want to share with you some of the thoughts that we've had as a board um, and open up that conversation a little bit with all of you so that we can be out there having the best possible and the safest possible visits while we're working with our therapy dogs. Um, so the number one piece here is it's important to be aware of and in control of your dog at all times. Um, some ways that we can do this include um, always keeping our dog in front of us, not only holding that leash, but also holding our dog's collar and or harness, such as in this photo. So in this photo, the handler has both hands on her dog. She has her leash in her right hand while also holding her dog's collar with her thumb looped through it. And then her left hand is on her dog's harness. So no matter what the dog does, no matter how that dog moves, this handler is in control of the dog. Sometimes it does make more sense to position our dogs facing away from the person that we are visiting. Um, it's more area to pet and easier control for us as far as controlling the HUD is concerned. Um, in this particular photo, um, this person is not able to use his arms, so he wanted to be able to look at the dog. And so this was an important piece to make sure that we accommodated and we allowed for that to be happening. Um, we can also use mats, furniture, strollers, lots of different pieces and parts to best position our dogs as we visit. So in this one, you can see that, that the dog is sitting in her stroller so that she's a little bit higher up as the person that she is visiting is in a wheelchair. And the handler's got complete control over what the dog does so that they can have some eye-to-eye -eye contact and really have a good visit for someone who is not able to use his hands or arms. Um, there's lots of different ways to control our dog's head. Um, but these are just a few things to get you started on thinking through that process about it. Um, we, as I said, probably the biggest piece is keeping our dog in front of us at all time, times. If your dog is behind you, you can't do anything with what they're doing. Um, all those other little pieces and parts are probably very unique to each of our teams and each of our dogs and even maybe to each of our visits but they're all important things to consider so that we can have those really nice visits where we are keeping control of the situation, but the people that we're visiting with are getting a lot of really good pet therapy. Okay, another question that we get a ton is, can I take guests with me when we visit? And we know how excited your friends and your family and the people that know you and your dog are to hear about your therapy dog visits and, and really wanting to know what it is that you do. So we do already have some rules in place that you can go ahead and look up. And if you have an op, if you have a question right now, you can certainly ask it in the Q&A section about this. Um, you can take guests with you when you visit only in compliance with rule number 15, which is in section two, visits. That says anyone accompanying an ATD certified team must not need any assistance from the handler and must be at least 18 years old. Your facility also must give permission for all visitors. So if your mom wants to go along with you to see what you and your therapy dog do, and she is completely mobile and can, can go on the visit on her own and not need any assistance from you, and if your facility agrees, she is welcome to go along, um, but make sure that you meet all of these criteria, not just one or two of them. The last piece is that dogs may never be a guest on a visit. 
So even if you're a tester observer and you've got people who want to shadow you and see what you're doing, they are absolutely welcome to come along following these same rules about guests on visits, but they may not bring that prospective therapy job with them um, and still be in compliance with our ATD rules. Okay, do I always need to hold my dog's leash in my hand? And again, the short answer is yes, you do. According to rule number 38, section seven, safety precautions, our leashes must be held in our hands, may not be hooked or attached to our bodies, our belt, chairs, walls, purses, another person, et cetera. This includes dogs and strollers, rule number 29, that's what our photos of. Being held, rule number 39, for small dogs, if someone were to hold your small dog in their lap, you still need to have a hold of that leash and still be controlling your dog, and dogs being walked as part of a visit, rule number 40. We also want to iterate at this point that dogs under your, under your foot, excuse me, or standing on that leash are not a substitute for holding the leash in your hand. You certainly may hold the leash in your hand and have your foot on your leash if you need to shorten that up just a little bit um, for whatever reason, but it may not be only under your foot. It must also be in your hand. That is the big important piece here is we always wanna be holding that leash in our hands. Okay. ATD requires a minimum of one visit every three months per handler dog team. This is rule number 11, section two visits. And with our newer um, portal and logging visits and being able to have people let us know what they're doing. And we do thank all of you that have been putting those visits into the portal. That information is fabulous for us to have for things like grants and for research purposes and different things like that. Um, so we do appreciate all of your efforts to do that. Um, but we wanted to let you know that this is not a quarterly situation. It is one visit every three months from your last visit. So if your last visit was February 15th, your next visit needs to happen before three months from February 15th are up. So March, April, May 15th. It is not a quarter, January, February, March. It is from one visit to the next. So make sure that you're keeping track of that. If you have more than one dog registered to you, as many of us do, be sure that you're looking at all of those portals and all of those logs, excuse me, not all of the portals, your portal, all of the logs, um, and make sure that each of your dogs is getting that visit once every three months um, from that last visit. And again, we do ask if you're not already, please log your visits in the portal. It's so important and so helpful to us to be able to have that information and those numbers and know what all of you are doing. That way we can share things with different places that ask us questions as well as on our social media and website. If you don't know how to use that log or even your portal, we do have a video tutorial on our YouTube channel that tells you exactly how to do this. So please make sure that you check that out and follow along there and you will have no problem getting all of that logged in. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this screen up for just a second um, and answer some questions if there are any, but uh, before I do that, I want to just kind of go through really quickly what is on this screen. Um, there is our website, therapydogs.com. There is a wealth of information there, including the link to get to your portal. Um, for those of you who might be watching this recording, and um, want to join their uh, Alliance of Therapy Dogs. Um, there's a ton of information for new teams also. Um, we do have a Facebook page and that's listed there as well as an Instagram page. And we love to interact with you all there. Um, so make sure that you check those out. Our YouTube channel is listed there. Um, this particular webinar, once the recording is uploaded and we can do that, it will be on the YouTube channel so that you can go back and watch it or you can share with other people that this recording exists. 
And then, of course, there's always our main office that is a wealth of information. You can email them at office at therapydogs.com or give them a call at that phone number listed. Um, so are there any questions that we want to be answering or anything that any of my fellow board of directors would like to add to what we had in this webinar today? Lori, there were a couple of questions regarding what do you do with your dog? What, what variety of things can you do if there is an accident? Oh, excellent question. So um, something that you can absolutely do, um, weather permitting, of course, is take your dog out to your vehicle and secure your dog in the vehicle. If weather permitting, if weather does not permit, excuse me, um, you can take your dog outside. If you have a fellow therapy dog handler with you, go off property and have that person help you with your dog. Um, or maybe just that person standing by your car is what you need. Um, some facilities do give our therapy dog teams a place to go and take their dogs in between visits. Um, so it would be something to ask your facility to and see if they have options available to you. But we just want to make sure that your dog is safe and not trying to go visit without you helping and supporting them. And I think that Monica mentioned if you have a good solid stay or down, um, you know, if you've got a little dog, maybe it'll take a short amount of time to clean up. You have a bigger dog, could take a little bit. <laughs> For sure. I totally agree with that. Yeah. If you've got, if your dog's got a great um, sit or down stay and is willing to be close to you while you clean that up, just let people know that you're not doing visits right now and you'll be back with them in just a few minutes. Excellent. I'm going to go ahead here in about 30 seconds and take this screen down so our, you can see all of our directors. But now is the time to throw those questions in the Q&A so that we can talk about them. Um, we want to hear what questions you have about the topics that we talked about today. So I'm going to go ahead now and stop sharing. If you need any of this information, again, you can throw it in the Q&A and we're happy to share that with you again. There we go. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Any other questions that we need to talk about or anything that you guys all want to add and share with our all our folks who are out there? More, are there open questions and ones you yes. would like me to go ahead and answer? There are a couple of open questions. Okay, awesome. So the question is, I have a 55 pound golden doodle. Often residents in memory care cannot reach down to pet my dog. Is it okay to pull up a hard chair to have my dog sit on the chair so, my re so residents can pet my dog? Yes. Double check with your facility, make sure it's okay with them, but um, larger dogs can absolutely be on empty furniture. Okay. Um, Peggy asked, why weren't all TOs surveyed about having medical facilities available for one observation? Um, I'm going to um, ask you and Pat, or Pat, yeah, excuse me, not Pat, Kim, um, have that conversation privately. Um, so um, since this is a, a webinar for both our members and TOs, I think that's a question that probably doesn't fit into the scope of this particular webinar. Okay. We'll be getting a trained service dog in a year. How do I transition from a service dog to therapy dog work? That's a great question, Bruce. And I think that your best option is to, to talk to your service dog trainer. Um, your service dog trainer will know exactly what things you're working on and how to transition over to therapy dog work. Okay. Um, Wendy asks, if you take the tags, ATD tag off your dog, can you let someone else outside say, hold your dog while you clean up? Um, not exactly. You would need to be off property because our rules say that our visit begins and ends when we arrive on the property and when we leave the property. So oftentimes, I and I think other people have probably had this experience, I hardly have my dog out of the car and the visit is beginning. 
Sue, in that particular case, I understand exactly what you're saying. Um, we would definitely recommend being off property far enough away from the facility that that is not a question, um, that you are not on a therapy dog visit at that particular moment in time. Okay. Um, go ahead, Monica, if you want to answer the question on logging visits. Okie dokie. Um, so when you go on, it's going to be per handler. Um, so if your dog has made a visit with, you know, handler A, handler B is still going to have to make a visit every three months. Um, so it's per handler, not per dog. Yeah. Okay. In other words, it's per team. So if you have one handler and two dogs, um, isn't that considered with that dog as a team? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So each team, if you have two handlers and three dogs and each handler with a dog needs to make a visit once every three months. Yeah. Okay. Um, rules for having a dog on a hospital bed under 12 pounds. So that is actually very well written in our book. Um, I'm going to see how fast I can find that for you um, so that you know exactly where it's at and come go back and refer to it. I knew there was a reason I had these sitting right here. Okay. Maybe one of my board members are going to be faster than me. Okay, rule number 41. Dogs weighing 50 pounds or less can be placed onto furniture um, next to someone. If the dog is less than 15 pounds, they can be placed in the lap or on the bed next to someone. Of course, a couple of things to consider. Um, make sure that the person you're visiting agrees to it. Um, and also check with your facility to see if there's anything, any special protocols they want you to follow or and if they're okay with it. Um, so those are all things, but that is rule number 41, which is page 13 in your 2023 member handbook. Okay. Is walking your, oh, Monica's answering that question. Great. Um, Amy, did you want to answer Stephen's question about allowing people to request therapy dog visits? Sure. I know you're typing right now. I see that. Yes, <laughs> I've had two screens going. Uh, we do. If if someone wants to request uh, even a home visit or a facility visit or just wants to learn more about Alliance of Therapy Dogs, we have a contact form on our ATD website. Uh, so anyone who needs more information about what ATD does or how to set up visits, they would simply go to therapydogs.com, click on the contact uh, form and fill that out. And we're glad to send out information, let them know how many teams are in the area, uh, get them certificates of insurance if they need that prior to the visit. So we do that quite often. Uh, so do just point them towards our website and we're glad to provide them with answers to their questions and guidance on how to set up a visit. Perfect. Hey, Lori. Yep. <clears throat> We've had it pop up in the chat and I saw there was one on the Q&A. Uh, can you let everybody know um, how they can go on the website and request a visit or a facility request a visit? I, I think that's what Amy was just talking about. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was trying to read and... <laughs> Not a problem. Nope. Amy was just talking about that. Um, there is a contact form. Go ahead and do that. I also see that there's lots of questions in there. Um, it would be lovely if you threw those questions in the Q&A. It's much easier for us to make sure that we get all of those questions answered for you if they're in the Q&A as opposed to the chat. Um, and the chat makes it really hard to answer them. So um, please go back, except for the facility visits, the facility requests um, question, which we just answered. Um, if you have put a question in that queue in the chat feature, please go ahead and put it in the Q&A feature so we can make sure that um, we get that taken care of and answer those questions. Okay. Got a couple of open questions that I see uh, board members are typing answers to you. Um, so we are happy to answer more questions if you have them. 
please go ahead and put that into the Q&A. Um, we do have other webinars planned. So if there is something specific that you would like us to focus on, or if there are questions like we answered today, where we answer a variety of them, please let us know that. Um, we would love to help you out with those questions wherever we can. Awesome. As of right now, we have no open questions, so we'll wait another minute or two, see if any of you throw anything in there, um, and we'd love to answer those questions for you. Um, I just want to take this opportunity to make sure that I say thank you again for joining us today. This will be, uh, the link to this will be in your portal. Am I saying that correctly? And on our YouTube channel, once it's available, it does take a little bit of time because the recording needs to be downloaded and get all set up and things. Um, so give us a little bit of time, but we will absolutely get this posted for everyone. Um, don't forget to check out your portal. There's lots of great information in there, um, as well as lots of great information just on our website in general. Um, links to our other webinars, um, PDFs, um, different things like that, all that you can find on the website, um, either on the main website or in your portal um, for our members and TOs. Awesome. <laughs> um, Pat, we, we, we actually go back and forth about things like that all the time. <laughs> um, Pat, Pat asked, why not say 90 days instead of three months? Um, you have to get all of the board members to agree is the first answer there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, it's, it's not something that we choose lightly or that we choose randomly. Um, so at this point in time, the rule states once one visit every three months, um, is that subject to change? Of course it is. Um, but at this point in time, it is worded as one visit every three months. Awesome. Any other questions we can answer for y'all today? We are super happy to see all of you tuning in with us this afternoon. I know for those of us um, that are um, pretty much central time on West, this is kind of the middle of a Monday afternoon. Um, and so um, we want to thank you for taking time out of your Monday afternoon. Um, again, I'm still seeing some questions going into the chat and um, I will try to go in and, and answer a few of them really quickly, but it really is much easier if you put them in the Q&A. Um, one of the questions is, does ATD report to AKC or visits for getting the therapy level visit awards? It does not. That is entirely up to you. Um, you can download your log um, off of the portal and use that for reporting to AKC. Um, AKC does expect, and go ahead, Amy. Um, AKC just, expects us to do that, right? Our, yeah. our individual handlers. It's the handlers that want the title that would have to send in the paperwork to show that they did the visits along with the fee because you have to pay a fee to get the title. So um, the other thing you can re request from us that's free of charge is a visit certificate and it has your name, your dog's name and the number of visits that you've uh, logged on behalf of ATD. Uh, so any of those that are logged need to be with our organization under our insurance and then we'll send you a visit certificate and we can either send it via email or via mail or both. Uh, and then you can take that and send it off to AKC for your actual title. Perfect. Perfect. So I see Monica, if we, oh, that's a great question. Ruth asks, if we think of a question after this webinar, how or to whom should it be directed? And that is a very simple question. Let the office know. Um, and they will either answer it for you or they will forward it to the appropriate board member to answer that question for you. Monica, go ahead. Um, so D had asked where, if we need to carry the insurance letter on us on a visit, 
Um, it is not one of the required things that you need to bring on a visit, but if you are interested in having it, which is not always a bad idea, um, you can find it in your handbook or you can find it under members on our website. Um, and it just says right on their insurance letter. Perfect. And kind of tying into that answer, if a facility uh, wants more than the letter pre presented uh, to prove insurance, uh, we can also issue a certificate of insurance. So uh, if you need that because a facility is requesting it and you're not quite sure what they're asking for, uh, just forward that request onto the office and we can get that handled for you as well. Perfect. Perfect. Well, we are right straight up at three o'clock and we appreciate everybody's time um, for joining us today. And we want to be really cognizant of that. Um, if you have any final questions, we'll give you about a minute to get them in there. Otherwise, we are going to be signing off here in just a minute or two. Um, we, we appreciate your feedback. I see some people saying thank you and that they appreciate the webinars. We appreciate your feedback and we appreciate that you come. Um, we really want to be able to interact with you to the best of our abilities. There's a lot of you and not very many of us. Um, so these webinars give us a great opportunity to share um, what's on our minds, um, as well as answer your questions. Um, so um, Jared has answered, asked a question, Amy is typing an answer. Um, and so um, we thank all of you for being teams. You and your wonderful dogs make our job so much easier. Um, and we appreciate each and every one of you. Um, keep an eye on your emails, keep an eye on your portal, keep an eye on the website, keep an eye on social media um, so that you can know when we offer other educational pieces. Um, and if you have any other questions, or any other um, suggestions, please make sure that you share those with us. Um, we do have a couple, uh, we do have a question from Sophie. I'm gonna go ahead and answer that. And then if nothing else comes in in that time, um, we will go ahead and sign off. Um, but Sophie asked, in what circumstance can I give a treat to my pup during the visit? Can visitors give a treat to my dog during the visit? So Sophie, you can give your dog a treat anytime you'd like during a visit. That is entirely up to you. Um, the only time that you cannot share treats with your dog is during your handling test when you first became a, a started to become a therapy dog team. And we do not necessarily recommend that visitors give treats to your dog, but we also leave that open. You know your dog, you know how they take treats and how they respond to treats. Um, so again, it goes back to controlling your dog, controlling that visit and keeping things um, going smoothly and well. I'll give you a, 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 a personal, for instance. I have one dog that's very good about, one therapy dog that's great about taking treats. She'll take the treat. She's very unobtrusive, very covert about it. She'll take it and eat it off to the side and go back to visiting. I have another dog that is referred to as a shark. Um, and she loves her treats so much that when treats are part of it, she can't visit. So when I'm visiting with her, there are no treats. When I visit with my other dog, there might be treats, there might not. She doesn't care. Um, so um, we will um, leave that up to you and knowing your dog. Okay. I just add to that, to Absolutely. the treat real quick in that if you are visiting with other teams and you're giving out treats and the other team's dogs aren't, but they're watching your dog rather than visiting, just be mindful of that. So you're not distracting to the other teams. For sure. You y'all would have a beagle in your lap if that was the case. <laughs> At least if my dog was there. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So um, I think that we are going to go ahead and wrap this webinar up so that it stays close to a half an hour. We're a little bit over. Um, we want to keep uh, cognizant of everyone's time. Um, and again, if you have any questions after this webinar or if you're watching the recording, thank you for watching the recording. And all of those questions can be directed to our ATD main office. And that address was the very last slide in the PowerPoint. Um, any final words from board members? 
I'd like to thank, there's a, a couple of former board members on uh, the webinar today. And thank you both for um, being a part of this and continuing your education with ATD. Um, we, we always like to hear what you have to say. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. If no one else has anything to add, um, we are going to say goodbye. Have a great rest of your Monday afternoon. And we look forward to seeing you for the next webinar.